Hi guys, it's been a long time coming, but I'm bringing you something that we've been working on for quite a while. All the aero savings that you can make for free. All the free aero savings you can make on your bike. This is something every rider should know. Now we're only accepting legitimate sources of information here. We're only accepting kind of scientific standards, which basically we're defining as, as tested in a wind tunnel. Now fortunately, we don't have to do all of the months, possibly even years of wind tunnel work here. I'm going to refer to the specialized series, the wind tunnel, and you've probably seen that. But what we're going to do here at Fast Fitness Tips, we're going to distill all that awesome information for you into a really digestible take home message, which you can apply to your own riding. Now the specialized wind tunnel has actually tested 44 main tests, main comparisons, 36 accessory comparisons, and then eight three-way three comparisons. So all told, they've actually tested 88 comparisons in that video series. You know, absolutely many hundreds of hours of work, not to mention tens of thousands of dollars in that wind tunnel of theirs. Now, just to prove that we're not total specialized fanboys here, we are using one or two other data sources. And if you know of any good wind tunnel data source tests out there in the public domain, post it in the comments below. For example, I am going to cite the Pearl Izumi wind tunnel test here as well on one particular saving that's worth knowing about. And without further ado then, what is the take home message? I'll tell you right now that the savings, if you can draft, if you're riding with your friends and you can draft somebody else, amount to 358 watts. Even if you're riding solo, the savings potentially add up to 196 watts. That's if you make the best choices in all these areas compared to potentially the worst choices. And it is quite easy to make a bad choice. So to optimize your riding, I suspect you're already making several, maybe many of the good choices here already. But are you honestly making all of the best choices? All I'm doing here is providing you with some really good information so that you can make the best choices in all of these domains. So we've summarized those 88 tests in the specialized wind tunnel and distilled it into 35 useful take home messages here in the spreadsheet, which you can download below. And from those 35, we've done a little something a little bit clever, which we've looked at which savings are mutually exclusive. If they're stackable, then you can add those savings in watts together. And those stackable savings add up to about 17 additive savings that you can make. So in a nutshell, guys, what are the savings? Well, here they are off the top of my head. Saving number one is shave your beard. Saving number two is take your spare tube and put it in your jersey pocket, not on your bike, not behind the seat saddle, but in your pocket. Saving number three, tape up your helmet vents versus leaving them open. Saving number four, get your hair out of the wind or wear it in a tight braid. Saving number five, pin your race number. Saving number six, shave your arms. Also, shave your legs. Also, ride in the mock uh, TT position. If you're drafting, draft within 30 centimeters of a rider in front of you. And if you can, be followed by another rider behind as being in the middle of a draft will help. Although it is true, the more riders you've got in front up to a point also helps your draft. Regarding your clothing, wear uh, good tight fitting aero clothing, for example, a time trial skin suit, and ideally at the right size. Pearl Izumi have tested this and found that even if you think you're wearing one which is super tight, if you're overstretching it, uh, it potentially costs you 18 watts, watts of losses. So wear one that's the right size size for you, degrees. not just one that you feel is super tight. Yeah, it should be tight fitting, non-flappy for sure. Also wear appropriate summer clothing if it's good weather, not, you know, baggy clothing. And oh yes, put, put any paraphernalia of the bike out of the wind, including the water bottle, which unfortunately for maximum aero saving also has to be in the jersey pocket. So there they are guys, those are the savings to save you almost an unbelievable 196 watts against making the wrong choices in all those areas. Or if you're drafting around about 358 watts guys. Okay guys, welcome to the Fast Fitness Tips countdown of the best aero savings you can make on the bike without spending a penny. Yeah, these are all free savings, free savings that you can make just by positional change or attending to the bike, tidying things up. Yeah, these are savings that are gonna be worth making. So let's get into this guys, let's count them down.
here we go now we're going to start at the low end of the market now we're going to start with a couple of savings that don't really save anything just for the record so at the bottom no savings at all from casual versus uh, sports glasses okay similarly riding a cadence of 50 versus 100 and i take it anywhere in between is also not going to save you very much probably nothing at all or no let's put it this way it's at the limits of resolution of the wind tunnel and so different cadences themselves the aren't really going to slow you down from an aerodynamic point of view so those don't make any gains there are some gains now that are very very small worth knowing about but i'd rank them as tiny changes okay tiny gains let's get into this tiny gains growing a beard and cycling with a beard does that does that slow you down <laughs> well hardly it hardly slows you down about a quarter of a watt from uh, the drag on your beard so guys i think you're safe if you want to have a beard okay what about the spare tube if you've got a spare tube you want to go out with a spare tube for safety in case you get a flat where do you put it you could put it in the bottle in your frame or you could put it behind the saddle well on this one behind the saddle saves about half a watt similarly if you put the spare tube in your jersey pocket behind you that saves you about half a watt as well that's actually the optimum position in terms of watt saving going back to the eyewear in at number 31 then ski goggles do they slow you down well yeah apparently they do but the design they use is a little bit antiquated the design they use was like an 80s design the new goggles have that completely wrap around plastic lens but that somebody needs to test that for sure but there's a one watt decrement based on those 80s or 90 design goggles so those are the tiny aero gains let's go into small aero gains so small aero gains they're not tiny they're worth knowing about but they're not going to save you very much in at number 30 then in at number 30 is on a descent should you pedal or should you hold your legs level and not pedal well if you hold your legs still it's going to save you about three watts but to be honest there's there's much worse watt loss from not pedaling so i wouldn't go for the not pedaling just to save three watts i think it's worth pedaling guys just to keep your momentum going so not pedaling yeah it will save you a tiny bit but it's marginal these are basically marginal gains we're talking about at this end of the market. So in number 29, through the stickers on the helmet tip, this is when you've got your regular road helmet, you can tape up the vents and providing you don't overheat, that will save you about three watts. What about hair? Yeah, if your hair's flapping about, it's out of your helmet, you've got a, you're having a bad hair day, yeah, that's gonna lose you some time. It's not gonna be much, but if you can tie up your hair or shave your head, it's gonna save you around about three watts. Pin it to win it was about putting the number tightly on your jersey rather than flapping about. Yeah, that will also save you around about those three watts. So at the speed, don't forget, of 40 kph. In the fastest bottle series, now we've got several variations on where to put your water bottle. Basically, the seat tube is the worst position. The down tube wins four watt saving. But you can also you can also do four watts or have four watts of saving from shaving your arms, believe it or not. But if you're not somebody who wants to shave your arms, a little tip for you guys is to wear a long sleeve jersey, but make sure that jersey's tight and not flapping about in the wind. That will also save you about four watts. Similarly, on the fastest way through canvas, they looked at the tightly zipped jersey rather than the jersey flapping open. That will also save you about four watts. Now revisiting the bottle. Having the bottle behind the saddle and not on the seat tube, that will also save you four watts. So we're getting to the optimum bottle position, not on the seat tube, not on the down tube, behind the saddle or in the jersey pocket. In the jersey pocket, um, that will also save you five watts compared to having the bottle on the frame. If you can be bothered to carry the bottle behind you in the jersey, that's the optimized position for the bottle, should you have to have a bottle. Obviously, if it's a short ride, dispense with the bottle altogether. So those are the small aero gains, but let's get things heated up here. Let's go into moderate gains. So moderate gains, these are out of the marginal gains and they're into things every rider should know about. So at the bottom then, for those commuting riders, hybrid bikes, they tested the pannier and the side pannier is losing you about six watts compared to the pannier in the center position. In this shaved and dangerous series, they looked at the shaved legs. The shaved legs actually saves you 11 watts. They averaged it across riders, so it's pretty believable. 11 watts of 40 kph. Now, just one tip there, if you don't wanna shave your legs, same as applied to the shaved arms, you can wear long bib tights, providing they're tightly fitting. Save you 11 watts. 
What about drafting? In at, in at number 19 is our first drafting, drafting link here. But this is not drafting another rider. This is the big surprise, being drafted by somebody else. If you're being drafted by somebody else, it's saving you about 12 watts, whether that's another vehicle, motor paced scooter, or another rider. Another rider following you closely is gonna save you about 12 watts. Seasonal kits, they look to a good quality summer and good quality winter kits. I, I value those at the same price. So for that reason, I'm putting these down as no cost. But no doubt that the winter kit being more bulky does cost something in terms of being aero. And that was about 13 watts. It's one of the reasons riding in the winter is more difficult. Not just that, you've got temperature, you've got, you've got conditions, you've got precipitation, you know, you've got lots of factors. But the kit itself is going to cost you about 13 watts. Now, we've got side winds here. Now, if you're in an echelon position and the wind is coming from the side, you could just maintain your directly behind the rider in front and that will still save you some time as to being out of line. The time saving, well, in power terms, is around about 5% power or 15 watts. But the better saving, as we'll see, is being in sheltered diagonal echelon full formation. We'll look at that in one second. Now, if you're in a TT bike, they tested here tidying up your TT bike. Now, they had multiple items here. They had a pump, they had a CO2 container, they had a banana, they had juice, they had gels, they had three water bottles. So they had all sorts of clutter. And all sorts of clutter, albeit taped down, was costing 20 watts compared to having those integrated away in a pretty much invisible way on the bike. Now, if you can integrate them or stash them away on a road bike, there's no reason you couldn't save those same 20 watts. What they're basically saying is that having all sorts of clutter on your bike is gonna cost you around about 20 watts. So in at number 15, we've got the panniers back, the pannier back is back, and this time, if you can dispense with the pannier altogether and have a backpack, yeah, that's gonna save you about 20 watts. So that's your ultimate commuting tip. In at number 14, this is foot down versus pedaling down hill. That would actually be a kilometer an hour slower than that pedaling position. Now that last position where you had the feet level. Okay, those were our moderate gains. Now, things are really heating up now because we're going into large gains. Large gains, and in at number 13, we've got the first of our big positional changes. So this is getting down from the hoods onto the drops. Getting down onto the drops is gonna save you, even at a slow speed of 20 kph, about 15% of your watts, which is 15% of 200 watts or 30 watts. That's definitely a saving worth making at slow speeds. And they worked out that was the same saving in time as you get at fast speeds. In at number 12, is making the aero tuck, but ha not having the aero bars. So this is not costing you anything because there's no aero bars, but you're doing the fake aero bar position. You're putting your elbows on the horizontal bars and you're pretending the aero bars are there. Okay, it's a little bit um, unstable for beginners, but if you can maintain it and you see a lot of pros doing it, it will save you about 37 watts of 40 kph. Number 11 then, riding on the drops versus the hoods going so low. So we already had drops versus hoods at slow speed. This is high speed, 40 kph, and this will save you about 13% of your power or around 39 watts. Okay, hoods versus tops now. So if you come out of your area position altogether and sit up, and basically that's like a climbing position, that's gonna be really costly. And the actual watt loss is around about 54 watts. So remember that next time you come out into that sitting up position. It's costing you 50 watts or more. Into the top 10, we're in at number nine. This is drops versus hoods again. Again, hang on. Oh yeah, this is, <laughs> this is drops versus hoods again in the pack. So if you're already in the pack getting an aero advantage, you can double your advantage by going into aero position on the drops. So drops versus hoods in the pack, it's gonna save you about 57 watts altogether. Wow, that's a big saving, guys. In at number eight, the draft debates back, and this one is drafting another rider 7.7 .7 meters ahead of you. So it's not that close. 7.7 .7 meters, they're fair way away, but they still calculated there's a 60 watt, 60 watt advantage there, which is surprising. In fact, they had to get out to 11 meters before that advantage was dissipated. Drafting closer up. So in the in the effect of drafting video, they looked at the six meter draft and they found 65 watt saving or so. Now those are the large error gains, but I'm not finished, I'm not done there guys. We're into the top six for huge gains. Now these are the ones 
really you can't ignore, no matter who you are, if you, if you want to go fast on the bike, you can't ignore these huge gains. Okay, let's go to number six. Number six is the perfect tuck. This is going into a crouch position versus the drops in a perfect tuck will save you about 100 watts. So the crouch versus the tuck, yeah, it's nerve wracking, but that will save you 100 watts altogether. Number five, now this is where we revisit our echelon. We had it, we had it below, remember? That's gonna save you 114 watts altogether. Okay, next one, if you're, in a, if you're in a mini pack and you've got several riders and you're riding in a triangle, two riders ahead, one rider in between behind, you're gonna save about 120 watts. Those two riders ahead, even though you're in between them, are gonna shelter you in a big time way from that wind ahead to the tune of 120 watts. Into the top three now. Number two, if you're in that mini pack and you're right behind in a line, two riders, and the wind's coming directly in front, you've got the double shelter of two riders ahead. You've got about 135 watts saving there at 40 kph. So what's number two? We're down to number two, the top two. Number two is the draft again. <laughs> the draft again, but this time going right up close, right up close to 0.3 of a meter, 30 centimeters, is about as close as you can safely get without risk of touching those wheels. But if you can do it, if you can do it and get within 30 centimeters, they're saying there's 150 watt gain roughly. Wow, guys, that's massive. If you, if you can ride that close and get within 30 centimeters, that's where your big time savings are. But there's one more in at number one. This is the classic from the, the from mega crouch going downhill. Should you be able to maintain that position? And I can't do it, but if you can safely, by the way, you could get a saving of up to 300 watts going downhill because you will get your terminal velocity, which is around about 68 kph or more, roughly four, five, six, seven, eight kph higher than regular crouch or riding on a uh, aero tuck position. So the Froome crouch is the biggest saving on this list, albeit limited to brave riders going downhill. But wait guys, I'm not finished. Wait guys, I'm not finished. Look in column H, I've got a column for additive. This tells you whether the savings can be chained together. Yeah, some of them are mutually exclusive. They can't be added together simply. But I've taken the ones that can be added together and let's look on tab two together. These are the savings that you could add up to make the most optimized versus the least optimized rider. So most optimized rider is as follows. They are shaved as in no beard. They've got their spare tube in their jersey pocket. They've got suitable eyewear, not crazy eyewear. They've got their covered helmet with aero vents covered up with tape. They've got the hair out of the wind or a shaved head. If wearing a race badge, it's pinned. If they've got arms, <laughs> Hey, what do you mean if you've got arms? Everyone's got arms. Their arms are shaved. They've got their bottle. If they're carrying their water bottle, it's in their jersey pocket. If they've got legs, okay, they've got legs. Then the legs are shaved. If they're riding with another rider, there's a rider behind as well as in front. And the rider behind is giving them some savings, as is the rider in front. And they're riding up to 3.3 meters to the rider in front. They're wearing a good summer kit. The kit's done up, tightly done up, zipped up at the top. They're riding with the phantom aero bar positions. Those are your savings, fully optimized versus non-optimized, fully unoptimized versus fully optimized in a road, road cyclist. Those are my total savings on a road bike that you can get for free. Yes, boom guys, these are all for free. Wow, obviously I'm gonna present this series at some point that are not for free, but these are your free savings. Oh. Wow guys, that was a hell of a lot of savings made either in the draft, roughly 358 watts, or riding solo, roughly 196 watts. Yeah, we've had to make certain assumptions and we've taken all that data from the specialized wind tunnel. We've converted those seconds over 40K back into watts using Cycling Power Lab or Cycling Analytics. You can do the same yourself. But the point is, this is robust data. These are free savings and some of them can be stacked together. These are the best free savings you can make to go faster on the bike. All right, have a good ride, guys. Thanks for watching.